we searched for a man named Jim Sonnet. And the legends folks tell may be true. Most call him gunman and killer. He's my son, who I hardly knew. I raised Jim's boy from the cradle. Till the day he said to me, I have to go find my father. And I reckoned that's how it should be. So we ride, Jim's boy and me. Nothing like a cool drink of water to cut the dust. <laughs> hey, that's chilly. Don't think I'm going to let that little douse and count as your Saturday night bath. <laughs> that's good to know, Grandpa. I sure am looking forward to a nice, long, hot water soaking for the both of us. I'm going to remember them words. <laughs> Come on, let's keep going, huh? According to them directions we got, that must be Buck's place. Yeah. Well, now, Grandpa, I know how you feel about being here, but let's not stay too long. Well, we did ride 15 miles out of our way, you know. I reckon I know that fact about as well as you do, boy. But 15 miles ain't much space to travel for friends I ain't seen for 15 years. Come on. Come no closer. Turn tail and get out of here. Hold your fire. It's me, Will Sonnet. Don't shoot, son. You must be reloading, Grandpa. We got time to ride out of rifle range. Never mind. You're sure taking this lightly, Grandpa. That man in there, whoever's doing that shooting, ain't never heard the name Will Sonnet before. He must have got the wrong directions to Buck Cobbs. Son, I wish it was so, but that man with the rifle is Buck Cobb. I wish to say one thing, Grandpa. When you make friends, you really make them. This ain't no place for sass. Well, what are we gonna do, just sit here all day? I don't intend to. He'll kill you. He could have done that already. Next to me, Buck's the best rifle shot I know. You see my gun belt, Buck? And I know you can hear me. I'm coming out with my hands up. I said I'm coming out. You don't. You're a dead man. That man don't even know you. Oh, he knows. That's mighty fine missing, Buck. Now, cut out that nonsense, Buck. You know I ain't gonna stop. I know you got some reason for all this foolishness, but you gotta be more careful. I might catch a ricochet. Come in, Will, you old fool. Come on, boy, what are you waiting for? More coffee, Will? Yeah, thank you, Molly. You said we'd talk after breakfast, Buck. Well, it's after. You uh, ain't gonna like it, Will. Well, I don't like being shot at, neither, especially by a friend. I think I'll head for the kitchen and let you men talk. Sure was good, Miss Molly. Yeah, me too. I'm glad. Good. It's, uh, it's Jim. The trouble he caused us, uh, me and Molly. Now, don't get all swelled up. It wasn't even his fault. Well, Jim come riding through here a couple of months back and stopped off to see us. He and Molly talked and laughed so much they ended up crying. Well, anyway, later on, I had to go into town for some supplies, and I asked Jim to come along. 
I figured we'd have us a couple of beers. Well, uh, well, you've heard all the rest before. Somebody recognized him, huh? A young punk who goes for tough. Jim didn't want any trouble. Tried to walk away. Ah, uh, they won't let him. The boy drew on him. Well, then it was self-defense. I know. But that wasn't the end of it. The boy got off a wild shot before he fell. And? It hit a little girl, 12 years old. Later on that night, she died. Oh, Lord, no. Oh, but that wasn't Paul's fault. He didn't fire that shot. No, nobody said he did. At least not when it happened. And now? Well, Jim, he fell awful bad about it. He wanted to wait around, but I told him to go. Why, Mr. Buck? Because I know the little girl's pa. He's mean, Will. Real mean, and I knew he'd be full of hate. And you was right. Dead right. A few days after, I had to go into town again for some supplies and for some medicine for Molly. She ain't been feeling well lately. And you know, they wouldn't sell me a thing. Not even the doc. They're blaming you? And this man, Elihu Long, and his brother, Tory got the town half scared to death. He convinced the other half that if I hadn't brought a gunman into town, none of it would have happened. This town got a sheriff? Sure. Piece of one, scared of his own shadow, nothing but a jailkeeper. So, what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Just wait till they forget it. And in the meantime, oh, I get my supplies from another town. How far away is this town? Eighteen miles, there and back. It ain't so bad, and ain't going to last forever. You know, Buck. This don't sound like you. Look, Will, I know I can ride into town and force them to sell to me. I can even face up to L.E.U. Long. I might win. I might get myself killed. Molly's not feeling good. I'd hate to leave her a widow. And I sure ain't planning on leaving this place that the two of us built from nothing into something. Well, they can't blame you for that, Buck. But me and Jeff can ride in and see what we can do. It'll be for you and Paul. You'd have to kill or be killed. One way is as bad as the other. No, I, I just want the two of you to, to ride on out of here. That's why I shot at you from the house, in case somebody was watching. Things are bad enough without me welcoming two more sonnets. I'm sorry. We're the ones you're sorry, Buck. Well, regardless, I, I wouldn't want, want to spoil Molly's chance to visit some more with you two, so why don't you wait around and leave after supper? When it's dark, huh? Excuse me. You, uh, you sure got a lot of stuff here, son. You going far? All the way to Texas. Then you're not from around here, huh? Nope. Where'd you say you were from? I didn't. What's your name? Jeff. That all? Well, that's enough for people who don't know me. This is your wagon, ain't it? Well, I wouldn't be loading it if it wasn't. What if I called you a liar and said this wasn't your wagon? Now, you call me whatever you want to, mister. Tori, you remember the day that we ran Buck Cobb out of town? Sure do. And didn't I make my mark on his wagon with uh, this here knife? You sure did, Elihu. That uh, sure looks like my mark, don't it? Now, don't move, son. Get his gun. Now, get up real slow. Now, let's try again. What are you doing with Buck Cobb's wagon? I told you, mister. I don't know Buck Cobb.
pocket. I was just wondering, what did he do? He was driving Buck Cobb's wagon. And he was loading supplies on it. Then you should have done him up a lot worse than you did. All right, all right. Now, don't let him loose and let me know when somebody comes to claim him. I want to know who he is. I sure will, Elihu. Are you, Sheriff? You're a goner. Might as well surrender. Well, Sheriff, looks like we just about saved you from a licking, eh? What are you doing in town? We come looking for somebody. This here's Will Sonnen. He's Jim's paw. Uh, well, uh, I gotta be going. Uh, nice meeting you. Grandpa. Jeff. You all right? Well, I've been better. What happened, son? Two men. They recognized Mr. Buck's wagon. And they uh, worked me over pretty good. What about it, Sheriff? What you holding the boy for? Well, come on, speak up. Disturbing. Disturbing the peace. Blaylock, you know that boy didn't do no such thing. Well, that's the charges, according to the men that brought him in. Who might they be? Elihu and Tory Long. That figures. Who gave them the right to do your arresting? Now, shut it down, Buck. That ain't the proper way to treat the law. What's your fine, Sheriff, to get the boy out? There ain't none. Sonnet, I'm Elihu Long. Your checker playing friend sure has fast feet. Your son killed my little girl. I hear it was a pure accident. The James didn't fire the shot. As far as I'm concerned, he was the only one on the street that day. You know that ain't true. You keep out of this. If you hadn't brought that scum into town, my little girl would still be here. Mister, you sound like you was judge and jury. Hangman, too. Well, I want the boy out. Oh, well, that's too bad. What about that, Sheriff? Well, I... When I say so. What is it you want, mister? Well, it's like this. I wanted Jim Sonnet, but he ran. So I guess I'll just have to settle for you. Well, now, I'm sure sorry I won't be able to oblige you. Well, that's too bad, because I'm tired of waiting. So if you won't do it, and Jim ain't here, I guess Buck will have to do. Let's go, Buck. And just how far are you going to go, Mr. Sonnet? Ain't you forgetting something? What about the boy? Buck, how close is the nearest lawman? About 30 miles, Benton. Don't you worry, son. First thing tomorrow, I'll take me a ride to Benton. Even you ain't crazy enough to shoot an unarmed man in a cell. Sonnet, you're gonna fight me. I promise you that. Mister, I'd sure like to accommodate you. I swear I would. But some people has to have a good reason before they can kill a man. Well, you're gonna have your reason, Mr. Sonnet. A lot sooner than you expect. <laughs> For you, mister. Two beers. I ain't serving him. I didn't hear him order nothing. You said two. You trying to tell me what to do with my beers? No, mister. I... Let him have what he wants. Men, this here is Will Sonnet. Jim Sonnet's paw. Oh, I called him out. But he won't fight. Maybe, uh, maybe he's just another baby killer like his son Jim. He ain't got the stomach to face a man. Steady with That might be your reason to come in, Mr. Sonnet. Buck Cobb! Somebody please find Buck Cobb! Molly! Molly! 
Bertie, Bertie. What, what happened? He, he, he burned us out. Livestock, everything. Who was it, Molly? Tory Long. He was yelling and screaming like a wild animal. Oh, Buck, it's gone. It, it, it's all gone. It... I'm going to kill him, Will. So help me, I'm going to kill them both. You ain't never been no good with a handgun. You wouldn't have a chance. I've got to do it. Who's going to look after her? Take it to a doc. Promise you won't do nothing till morning. I promise. And if the doc gives you any trouble, you know what to do. Come on, come on, let me help you. Just like I promised, Mr. Sonnet. You were right. I got me a reason. Here or on the street? On the street, but not now. After breakfast tomorrow morning. I want the whole town to be there. And I want you to have plenty of time to sweat. That'll be the day. I want the boy to be let out of jail now. You think of running? There ain't no danger of that. And you know it, mister. Okay. He's out. One more thing. Just to sleep on. They say James is the fastest. Well, he ain't. I am. No brag. Just fact. <laughs> He probably slipped off the back way, huh? Well, what do you know? There he is. We sure do make hot breakfast sausage around here. Grandpa, if you'd eaten any more, we'd have to carry you down that street. Oh, that's sonnet strategy, son. Keep him waiting. Makes a man edgy. <laughs> Besides, the sign said all the coffee you can drink. No extra charge. Time to get with it. Watch your step. If they try anything tricky, you know what to do. For sure. Here he comes. You ready? Not quite. I got something to say to all you folks that come to see this shooting. My boy James ain't never killed no child. Fact is, he never killed nobody unless he was drawed on. I don't say that. It's a fact. Passed on to me by folks wherever I go. Now, my little girl is dead. And Jim Sonnet was the cause. And it could happen here again, right here, right now. These children watching today out there. You gonna blame me if one of them gets hit by a stray shot? No. Don't make much sense, does it? Well, let's get on with it. As soon as I'm finished. Hates like an open sore. It eats on a man till it destroys him. It makes a man like him burn folks' home down at night. It makes folks like you turn on your neighbors. Refuse them what they need to live on. I don't know who's worse. You folks or him. Now, mister, I'm ready. Make your move. You better kill me. Don't make me do that, son. Don't be a fool, you can't make it. Tory, now! The next one is up to you. Throw it away. You don't have a chance. Do like I say. You're real bad, but you don't deserve to die. And it ain't gonna bring your little girl back, neither. I want to 
thank you again, Will. You too, Jeff. Hell, it ain't never been no thanks needed between us, Buck. <laughs> well, so long, Miss Molly. It's been good seeing you. Son, I, I hope you find your pa real soon. And don't make it so long between uh, visits, Will. I won't. Take care of yourself now. You know, you could stay longer. Oh, you ain't about to trap me into hammering and nailing your new house together. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, it looks like you got all the help you need anyway. <laughs> Like the book says, Lord, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble, but the path of the just is as of the shining light that shineth more and more under the perfect day.